Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth. I own Fitness Junkie Training, and I specialize in helping busy adults transform their lives, both physically and mentally. And today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Nick Reibolt, who I was on his podcast, and he's actually a big reason why I started my own podcast. Um, He's got the Positive Masculinity Podcast, um, and he's all about helping men develop their character and find and live their purpose. So I'm super excited. Thanks for being on the podcast, Nick. I'm really excited to have you, man. Thank you for having me, dude. I'm super fucking keen for it. <laughs> super fucking keen for it. <laughs> and as you can tell, he's got a, a pretty sick Australian accent. Um, and I, I love that word. You, it seems like you use keen all the time. I love that phrase. <laughs> yeah, oh, I didn't even notice, man. I just spit it out. <laughs> That's, <just a> <laughs> That's cool. Well, sweet, man. So um, I'm going to dive right into some of these questions with you. So to get right into it right off the bat, like what has called you to kind of want to help men develop their character? Very good. Do you want the long answer or the short answer? (laughs) Whatever you want, man. We got all the time in the world. So it's It's a good question, man, because you know, there's so many different areas that you can improve in your life. And it's like, well, you're helping people with fitness. I'm helping with character. Other people help with, you know, depression, and anxiety. There's so many areas. And for me, it was, so I had always struggled with mental health issues and it wasn't your know, typical, like I'm depressed, I'm anxious, that kind of stuff. It was deep, deeper ingrained issues. And so a couple of years ago, I've spoken about this on a podcast. I don't even know if you, you've you listened to it or heard it, but I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which is a personality disorder as you can tell by the name but the one of the the big things around it is a lack of identity and you don't really have a firm idea of who you are and so the the cornerstone for kind of um starting to overcome that was developing a framework around who the fuck I was like developing yeah. um a list of character traits and values and morals that I wanted to align with and so that's kind of what I did I created a framework you know I won't go through the whole thing, but you know, someone who's disciplined, integrity, you know, enjoys life, grateful, work ethic, all these things. And then essentially just started basing everything I did around that. And it wasn't smooth sailing. Like, there's still a lot of challenges I went through and I still don't get it right all the time. But for me, having that framework gave me something to, I guess, base what I do off of. And looking around me, I'm like, fuck, so many young dudes they feel lost, they feel stuck, they don't really know who they are. And it's often, you know, I'll ask them, okay, who are you? What do you believe in? What are your character traits? I don't know. And so I realize it's not just me. A lot of people are in a similar boat. And so, yeah, long story short, that's kind of why I push young dudes to develop a character because literally your entire life and your perception of the world is based off of who you are. So long story short, that's why I'm doing it. That's awesome, man. That that's very courageous of you, man. Because you know most people wouldn't, for one, they wouldn't share that. Um, and honestly, like sometimes the the best things and the the way you can provide the most value for others is to share how you've transformed yourself. You know, for for me, like you know, I was able to overcome. You know, I was a very small kid, put on muscle, like kind of took control yeah. of my physical goals, and now I'm able to to have a lot of value to share with other people that have similar goals and they want to take control of their, their physique and their health and their fitness. So it's awesome that you've kind of turned, you know, your own, I don't want to say it like issue, but your, your own circumstance into, into an issue. (laughs) Your your own circumstances will say, you know, just into like your own superpower that you can help others with. I think that's super powerful. Um, So it's awesome, man. What, what ways, you know, what ways are you working on this for yourself? Like what, what ways are you actively developing your own character? Good question, dude. So look, it's a very, it, a lot of people think, you know, whether it's character development, confidence, you know, mental health, it's like you work on it, you get to a goal and then you, you're sweet, but it's quite the opposite. It's a constant process. And so for me, it's like literally every day, I'm like, okay, how how would this version of me act? How would the best version of me act in this scenario? And it's like, okay, I I don't know. Just for example, this isn't something I've done, but I use this example. You know, I've got rubbish, like a plastic bottle. There's no one around. I could just throw it on the ground, right? It's not a big issue. But integrity is part of who I want to be. 
okay? And integrity means doing the right thing, acting virtuously when no one's around. And so, no, I can't throw it on the ground. Fuck, I'm going to have to find a rubbish bin. That's just like a really tangible example. But it's just questioning what you're doing every single day and every moment and whether or not that aligns with the person that you want to be, like your values, your morals, your character traits. And then, dude, just slowly closing that gap. Like I said, it's a constant process. People think it's going to be sexy and easy. It's not. It's hard. It's it's messy. But it's just constantly checking in and being aware of where you're actually at, how the best version of you would act, and whether or not that gap is closing. Because I think for a lot of people, a lack of fulfillment or depression or that lack of excitement comes from a gap between who they actually think they are and who they really are or who they want to be and who they are. Right. Right. And I, so, you know, cause I know you work on men with, with doing this and, and helping them. And it sounds like you're actively doing things in your life, you know, to, to help yourself as well, like develop this character and live in alignment with what your purpose is. Um, how does someone in the first place find their purpose? Like how does someone, you know, figure out what what are the traits that they want to be aligned with? Mm. Like, how does someone figure these things out? That's a great question. And in in terms of, so with the traits, if you want to work out what traits you want to embody, what I suggest you do, and I, I do this with my dudes, is just pick out some role models or people that you aspire to be like or you look up to. So when I started, I literally was like, okay, Andrew Tate, Will Ferrell, um, David Goggins, um dustin martin he's a footballer over in australia and then work out why like what parts of these people do you like so for me it was andrew tate he's very hard working he's blunt to the point right and since then i've become someone who's a lot more upfront and blunt and straight to the point like as as you can probably tell from some of my content right yeah. and then <clears throat> same with david goggins like it wasn't i want to be exactly like him it's i took parts of parts of him he's very hard working he does really hard shit and i was like okay i want to embody those things so pick out people you look up to and aspire to be like don't go i'm going to replicate them pick out the parts of them that you want to align with and then put all of those traits into what i then called like a super role model so it's a combination of all of these phenomenal traits yeah. and just start working towards embodying them if that makes sense yeah, that's pretty awesome. And, and yeah, I already kind of knew your answer because I, I I cheated and I've done your course <laughs> and everything. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so I, I think this is a really cool practice that not many take the time to do. And it really, does, you know, it sounds like it's difficult, but it doesn't take that much time. Like it, you can honestly do it in 10 minutes, just thinking about some mm -hmm. of the people you look up to, you know, think about those traits. And I think the important thing you said too, is like, you don't need to adopt all of their traits, just, yeah. you know, adopt the things that you like about them that you want to embody for yourself. You know, a lot of people have certain things to say about Andrew Tate, right. But that, you know, it, it's undeniable that he has certain qualities that are admirable that you may want to, also, um, you know, adopt for yourself. So, yeah, I think that's super important. And, and that's a really good practice that not many take the time to do. And it's like, wow, like not many take the time, not many people take the time to, to literally think about, who is the person you want to be, right? You know, it's something yeah. super important that I feel like just gets overlooked completely in society. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. But, you know, I think a lot of people are lost. A lot of people don't know the the character traits and, and skills and kind of things that they want to develop. You know, they don't take the time to kind of consider that and write that down. Um, so do you, do you write these things down and like um, have them somewhere so that you can kind of mm. see this stuff every day or like how, how do you constantly have that reminder to, to have these certain traits, you know, just always um, reminding you where yeah. you want to get to? Yeah. Good question. Look, I, like, I'll be totally honest. I've been slack with that lately. When I first started, I had them written out in my book, like with the traits, as you know, the definitions and then examples, like I'd have like six pages and I'd reference that pretty regularly when I, it was often when I became dysregulated emotionally or when I felt like I wasn't acting in accordance with who I wanted to be, I'd go back and reference the book. Okay. Now I've, I've got a pretty firm idea in my head of who I want to be. And look, to, to be fair, I, I probably should be referencing it a bit more and looking at it, but I have also gotten to the point where I, I do have a good idea of what that looks like in my head. But for people who, if you're listening and you actually do care about yourself and you are going to go and do this, 
which I, I suggest like everyone does it. Like you said, you can do it in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. If you are going to do it and you're starting out, like, yeah, put it up on your wall, put it on your phone, lock screen, do all those kinds of things. Like I've done an emotional regulation activity and you can see on this, on the mm-hmm. video, I've got it set as my lock screen. And um, yeah, whenever you do these new kinds of things, if they're in sight, they're in the front of your mind and it becomes a lot easier to embody them. Because when you do these things, it's so easy to be like, yep, yeah, done it and then put it behind you. And then if, like Alex Hormozzi says, if if you read something or consume information and it doesn't change your behavior, you haven't learned anything. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is pretty in line, kind of good segue into the kind of the next question I had for you. And we talked about 75 Hard and Andy Frisella a little bit when I was on your podcast. Yeah. Um, and he talks a lot about kind of visualization. You know, he's been able to basically use visualization to visualize where he wants to be. And he's like basically you know, manifested that in his life with all his success. So what are your thoughts and opinions on visualization? Is this something that you actively work on? Like, how do you think the mm. listeners could use visual visualization to, to yeah. kind of manifest what they want to accomplish? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic. I think I don't use visualization that much. I do have a, a couple of opinions around it though, and manifestation. I think that visualization can be powerful, but you have to actually get your heart behind it. Like if you truly believe that you can achieve what you're visualizing, yeah, fuck yeah, you can do it. But, you know, and I've fallen into this trap of saying, yeah, I believe I can do it. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Like that's beyond you. So you need to truly believe. The other thing around visualization too is I've spoken about this before. I think that negative visualization can be equally as powerful. And so think about it. If you, you visualize this really positive uh powerful ideal life or version of yourself that's enticing fuck yeah but it's like well what's the detriment of not achieving that i stay the same if you can then visualize you know 10 years in the future you are exactly the same person or you're worse off you know you don't have a lot of money you're not in good shape that to me is super motivating it's like do i want to be 30 years old and be overweight out of shape have no money you know, not have a, a good looking kind partner, all these kinds of things. And to me, that's super fucking motivating. Yeah. And following on from that with like manifestation, all this bullshit about like, oh, the universe will give me what I deserve. Like, I don't believe in that. However, I do believe that you can manifest things by like believing in it and saying it to yourself, but then taking action, you know, like you don't, it's like Hormozzi says again, you don't develop skill you don't progress by looking in the mirror and saying i am beautiful i am worthy of money it's like that's fucking bullshit but if you can say that to yourself say look i am capable of you know achieving xyz whether it's getting in shape making money attaining a relationship but then putting in the action required to become that person that's to me what manifestation is if that makes sense for sure yeah i think there's a few things to unpack there um for one you know i think what you're getting at is like you know to believe, I feel like you have to show yourself, you know, that, that you can do the things that are in mm-hmm. line with, with what you want to achieve, you know, yeah. like give yourself the confidence by achieving certain steps along the way. And that's going to make you believe that you can accomplish the, yeah. the long-term goal. Right. So yeah. I think that's a good point. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, so what are other ways you think people, cause I, I've come across people that struggle with this where, mm. you know, that they, they don't feel like they have the identity of a, a fit person or a successful person They, you know, maybe they have negative self-talk, you know, they don't have a positive identity. How can someone actively start, you know, improving their belief in themselves mm. um, and, and, you know, in a successful version of themselves that they're trying to visualize? Yeah. I, th- I think it's just about taking action on it. Like you can sit there and look, man, like we were talking about before, I'm running a marathon tomorrow and, three four months ago like look previously i played a lot of sport and i was super fit but more for short distance running and you know three four months ago when i was like i'm gonna do a marathon bro i went out for my first 5k run and i was like fuck i like i blew up after that yeah. and although i was in like phenomenal shape my aerobic capacity wasn't you know phenomenal and i didn't have the identity or the belief that i could complete a marathon but i didn't focus on that end outcome Right, I didn't focus on running a marathon. I focused on literally just 
pushing myself to do a little bit better than yesterday. It's cliche, but like, seriously, it, it was as simple as that. And so if someone doesn't have the identity of the person they want to be or all the things they want to achieve, mm-hmm. it's not about magically creating that overnight. It's about building it through convic- conviction and through steps that are going to get them there. If you want to become, if you're overweight, right. And you want to lose 20 kilos you can't just go to the gym and say, I want to lose 20 kilos and bang, you're a fucking, you have a fit identity. That's not how it works. Right. You've got to develop that over time. And you, and you probably know this very well. You've got to reverse engineer it. So, okay, here's the end goal. I want to be fit. How do I then become that person? I need to go to the gym. How do I start going to the gym? Will I get up out of bed and I go and join and I get a personal trainer like Cade, sign up with him. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and, and you just start taking those little steps and, you, there's always going to be that next level of imposter syndrome because there's always a level of, you know, success or a goal that you haven't attained. So for me, I'm obviously, you know, where I'm at with my business three months ago, it's like I couldn't get there, but I have. And now I'm looking at the next level and it's like, I couldn't get there, but I will. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah. And I, I think this is just to kind of tell my own like experience with this, with some of my clients yeah. that I've had in the past, you know, some of my clients that have wanted to lose a lot of weight, say they come in, you know, they're super overweight. It's, it's interesting. Some of those clients that want to lose a drastic amount of weight, they're super excited. They're very pumped up. You know, when, when they're on that call, they're like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be your best client ever. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 200 pounds, you know, some, (laughs) some really overweight individuals that come in. Um, But what I've found is like, you know, a lot of times they just, they get down on themselves really quick because their, yeah. their expectation is so high. Um, mm. But what, what I think a lot of these individuals have struggled with, and what I'd like the listeners to kind of take away is, you know, if you can just system st- systematically, just over time, you know, build your confidence by the little wins, you know, over and over, that, that's what stacks up. It's like, you're just giving yourself a little bit of confidence that you are that person every time you make those small achievements along. Mm. So it's really the process that help yeah. you um create that identity for yourself it's not like i create the identity and then i'm there you know what i mean so 100 percent. yeah yeah 100 percent, man that's a great point just to add on to it yeah people's expectations are far too high like th- this is the mindset you need to get into and it sounds very contradictory but it's the mindset you need you need to be able to be prepared to put in two years of work and expect zero results. Doesn't mean the results won't come, but you need to get into a mental space where you're, okay, I'm willing to put in this work for two years, five years and literally get no results. You will get the results, but if you've already convinced yourself that you've lost 200 pounds before you've even started, you're not going to fucking do it. Right. And if if your expectations are exceeding the input of what you're actually doing or the the work you're putting in, you're only setting yourself up for for failure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think having low expectations, but high standards for yourself is the way to, to set yourself up for success with that. Um, and kind of the example I'll say for myself, you know, in the past, cause I, I've been trying to get my YouTube channel to, to get some traction for a long time. Like I've, I've yeah. posted videos in the past, it's just like flop after flop. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think I had the expectation every time, like, all right, I'm going to expect to put this out, gain a, you know, a thousand subscribers, like be, you know, all these, I was expecting like these overnight results. Um, yeah. When our mindset has now shifted to like, you know what, I'm doing this because I enjoy the process. Like I, I enjoy now doing the podcasting. I enjoy creating the videos. Like if you can get to that point with whatever it is that you're trying to be successful in, then it's just a matter of time. And it's just, you know, then, then you enjoy the process. And so it's just, you're going to get there. It's just, it's just continuing on. So hundred percent, man. Yeah. Well, cool. And then one other thing you said um, in there that I wanted to unpack was, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly what you said. Can't remember exactly, but my, mm-hmm. my version of it is kind of like, um, well, you said visualizing or like negative visualization. What I like to say yeah. is like, you know, use your darkness and your light yeah. to get where you want to go. Like, you know, have yeah. your, your kind of North star, you know, visualize kind of the, where you want to get to, but also, yeah, like have the the darkness that you're kind of running from. 
Um, yeah. That, you know, that being kind of like the negative visualization, like what you don't want to become, or maybe like, you know, where you're at right now, like, you know, be honest with yourself with all the things that you're not okay with um, so that you can use both of those as motivation. So yeah. I, I think that's a huge point that you said with that. 100%. Like, it's a good old, you can run towards your dream state, but if you're not running from your pain, well, then you're not going to be running very quickly. It's like, yeah, you need the, the two biggest human motivators and this is going into psychology is yeah, pain and pleasure. And if you can balance the two perfectly, then the output that you're going to get from what you're putting in is going to be monumentally larger. And yeah, I think if a lot of people tell themselves a lie and they don't even realize you know, I'm guilty of it as you probably are. Most people have been at some point. We tell ourselves we're doing a lot better than we are. Like we put ourselves up on a pedestal right. when in reality, like if we were to look in the mirror and be brutally honest with ourselves and it's really hard to do this, like I still struggle with it. Not because, not because I don't want to, but because it's like, I just, I, there's a mental barrier there. But if you can look yourself in the mirror and be completely honest with yourself, I reckon most people would be actually pretty disappointed around who they are. Yeah, it's, it's a sad truth, but you know, it's, it's honestly, that that's what is motivating, right? It's like, and, yeah. and I think a lot of people, you know, the, the reason they're not motivated is because they're lying to themselves with that. Like, the, you know, they're, they're like, I'm totally fine where I'm at. They don't, they don't want to be honest, you know, yeah. they have that kind of face to face, you know, looking in the mirror discussion with themselves and be like, no, like, I'm not, a, I'm not okay with this. Like, I've got a lot more potential that I can reach. And I, I think that's, that's what, I, what drives me is like, the the thought of not reaching my true potential like how how scary is mm. that like we only live once right you know it's like you only are yeah. on this planet one time you know why would you not want to do everything you can to to reach your full potential in all the different areas of life that there are right so 100 percent, man and like j- just to add on to that super super quickly i put out a piece of content not that long ago kind of saying don't love yourself how you are like you're not okay and i and I want to elaborate on that a bit because the whole it's like a social movement of like love yourself exactly how you are you're completely fine i disagree with that and i'm not saying you shouldn't treat yourself with love because i think like one of the biggest forms of self-love and self-respect is like acknowledging that you're not okay how you are and you can do a lot better right and that's not to say that you're not a good person you don't have potential but it's to say that what you're doing isn't as good as you could be doing and you could be a lot better than you are. And to me, like the the strongest form of self-love and self-respect is saying, look, I value myself. I love myself. I can be doing better than what I am. And so I'm going to put in more effort and I'm going to do better. Like to me, that's what self-love and self-respect is. For sure. Yeah. And something that reminds, that reminds me of is, I think this is something Alex Hormozzi said recently. You're someone, or you just mentioned him a little bit ago. Um, mm. but it's like most people will give other people better advice than they give themselves. Like if, if, yeah. if people took their own advice, they'd be doing much better, right? Like everyone's mm. quick to be like, you should do this. Like, you know, yeah. you're doing this wrong, but, but no one's doing that for themselves. Right. Mm. So I, I think that that has a lot to do with, you know, reflecting, being mindful. Um, that's yeah. something I, I just had someone on the podcast, uh, that'll be coming out pretty soon. Um, talking about mindfulness and journaling and i think that's a big part of that so that's- yeah absolutely dude and it's it's also because it's so much easier to tell someone to do something than actually put the work in yourself like right right well, cool man um well i want to you know hear a little bit more about what the positive masculinity podcast kind of future looks like for you like what are you what are you trying to achieve and like what what can the listeners you know, expect from, from going over your channel and checking it out with the positive masculinity podcast. Uh, great question, bro. If you scroll back, you'll find a phenomenal interview between Kate and I a couple of <laughs> months ago. Um, but in terms of like the value I provide is like pretty much just how to be the most confident, capable, competent, and best version of yourself as, as a dude, obviously masculinity. Um, you know, I, yeah, put out, an episode every day, a couple of guests a week, but it's, it's, you know, everything from discipline through to, you know, how to be caring, how to get the best out of yourself, how to develop your confidence in terms of the vision, mate, I want to be up there with Joe Rogan and whatnot. You know how it is. I'm sure you're the exact same. Yeah, That's the goal. But as, as you know, and just a lesson for everyone, like it's anything you do, 
if the outcome is going to be valuable, it's a slow grind. Like nothing comes overnight and back to the expectations. If you're expecting big results in a short period of time, you're just going to let yourself down. And that's how you, you shatter your self-confidence. Right. So one thing to, to unpack on there. So you, you got this, you know, big goal. You want to reach, you know, high status podcast level, Joe Rogan status uh, with the podcast. Yeah. You know, what, what's the darkness that's driving you with that to kind of balance out, you know, where you want to go, what, what's driving you with that? Good, good question. I think, look, a, a big part of it is like my, my past and like my BPD and the, the darkness that comes with that. Cause there's a lot of darkness <clears throat> associated with that. But another part of it is just looking at these dudes who are achieving phenomenal things and thinking that not, not to say that I'm anything special because I'm not yet like that's a reality, but I know I've got a lot of potential. And if I look at these dudes who are achieving a lot and I don't end up there, then that to me is a failure. It's probably not the best way to look at it, but I know I'm capable of that. And so if I don't achieve that, well, then I've let myself down. So it's just, to me, it's just a form of self-respect and self-love. Okay. And then, you know, cause we talked about um, enjoying the process, like, and, mm. and not, you know, having too high of expectations. What are you doing to, you know, make sure that you enjoy the process and like, you know, give you that give you that confidence like what's what's making you enjoy the process and what's giving you the confidence um and, and showing you that you got that potential you know what what sort of things are keeping you going and, and giving you that drive to to achieve yeah. everything that you're trying to achieve so it's a tricky one because to be honest uh the the last period of the last season i've been in whether the last few weeks last month or so it's been a struggle to be honest like maintaining the enjoyment of that process but when you do lose i guess that enjoyment or you start to lose a bit of self-confidence that's where the discipline comes into play and just the the trust in what you're doing and because that's where people give up right when it starts to get hard and you're like fuck maybe this isn't for me that's where most people give up so if you can just recognize this can be a defining point between me and that dude next to me who's going to give up and then so the pool of people who are still going drops to you know 50 and then you go another year and you start to think of giving up again, but you you push through that and the dude next to you gives up and it drops to 30 people. So the longer that you can push through those challenging times, the closer you're going to get to your goal. And But at the same time, I'm still enjoying the process, man. Like yeah. jumping on, like having a chat with you, had an epic podcast yesterday with, with Dano and, you know, having conversations like that is, it's fulfilling and it, and it reminds you of, kind of why you're doing what you're doing so it's a balance of being grateful for the little things but also understanding that when you do want to give up the dude next to you wants to give up too and he's probably going to so you got to be competitive right you got to win (laughs) yeah i think something i mentioned to my clients recently and like kind of a message that i sent to all of them was yeah i think gratefulness is like the quickest pathway to happiness and just like, you know, feeling good about what you're doing. Like if in quickest pathway to, to a positive mindset, basically, like if you can be grateful for what's going on, you know, no matter how good or bad it's going, if you can be grateful for something that's, that's going to keep your, your mindset positive. Right. So I think that's big what you said mm-hmm. about gratefulness. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah. And then I think too, you know, just like you said, you know, most people are going to give up when, when the going gets tough and, yeah. really the real lessons that are going to shape and form you are in those hard times. It's like, mm. you know, that I forget what the exact saying is, but it's like, um, hard times make strong people yeah. or strong men or, and, you know, yeah. times make soft people. So, you know, whenever you're in those hard times, just know like that's, that's cr- making you stronger, right. <clears throat> that's creating strength in you. When yeah. it's easy, and just remember, you know, <laughs> that it's not going to be easy forever right you know that's how life is there's there's ups there's downs that's something i've talked about with my clients like you know sometimes if if things are going super well for me i'm like all right well i just (laughs) i've got my emotions in check because i'm like you you never know when there's going to be a dip so i try not to get too high when things are good i try not to get too low when things are bad because i know that as long as i kind of keep my mindset um where i want it to be and keep it positive then i'm going to keep moving in the right direction eventually you know, it's going to be up and down, but you're going to keep going in the right direction if you just stay on path. So Yeah, 100%, man. And like you said, you you got to 
you got to be emotionally regulated because if you're constantly riding the highs and the lows, you're going to get exhausted and you're going to go from feeling confident to lacking it, to feeling confident to lacking it. And yeah. just, to, just to add on what you said as well with the, the going gets tough and people give up. It's like, I've noticed this over the last three months training for my marathon. I, when I very first started, you know, I'd go on a long run and I'd be like, fuck, this is really hard. I'll just pull up a couple of K short, whatever, a couple of miles for the American, American dudes listening. <laughs> now I'm at a point where like I developed that resilience. And now, you know, last night I had my last run for the marathon. It was only five Ks. My legs were blown up. Like I, I had sore shins and I was like, could pull up a K short, whatever. And I was like, no, you, you're not doing that. A, because of the, the resilience I developed, but also because the more progress that you stack, so, you know, I'd gone from running 5Ks to 18 over that period of time. It was like, I've got a lot more results behind me. If I were to give up now, I'm sacrificing a lot more than I did when I gave up on my first run, if that makes sense. So the the longer that you last throughout that process and the more that you push through those barriers, the less likely you are to then give up because you're giving up a whole lot more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's awesome, man. Well, yeah. So we've mentioned you a couple of times. We had Nick is running a marathon literally in like 24 hours. So it's pretty <laughs> badass. <laughs> you're, you're better at running than me. That's for sure. I'm not, <laughs> I'm about fitness, but I'm not so much about running. Um, but yeah, so more power to you, man. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I think I'll probably wrap it up right here. I do have a coaching call here coming up in a little bit with my clients. I wish we could talk more, Nick. Um, but, you know, to kind of wrap things up here, um, what would you like to to promote? Where can people find you and everything like that? Uh, if anyone wants to, to chat or follow some pretty controversial and enticing content, just jump on my Instagram, nick.rybelt. So R-E-I-B-E-L-T. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to chat to anyone that, that wants to reach out and yeah, always, always open and talk about character development or mindset or whatever you boys want to hear. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Well, I'm sure we'll be on each other's podcasts multiple times, man. I, I enjoy talking with you and everything. So I appreciate you, man. And for everyone listening, I appreciate you for tuning in to the Elevate Everyday podcast. And I'm going to be having weekly guests every week, experts on the podcast. So make sure to smash the like button smash the subscribe button or listen on Spotify and you know, I'll see you in the next video, but in the meantime, elevate every day. And thank you, Nick, for being on brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Peace y'all.